BJJ bet, this big event, uh, first time event that happened over the weekend. And some of the crazy things that happened, mainly one that they booked Herbert Santos <laughs> for a match, which I'm surprised anyone's doing now. And two, he tapped to mount. So you, you, uh, this was one of the matches you saw, right? You yeah, saw I him. Saw, I didn't <laughs> see the entirety of the match, but I've obviously, obviously the clip of him tapping off of the mount was all over the place. Um, dude, man, you know, Eberth, I don't, I don't know what else to say. You know, you can get, he gets upset and, and shows all this fire and rage after questionable calls and all these things like that. Like he's this great warrior. And then something like this happens. Um, my opinion, and then we'll talk about the actual submission or lack thereof. Um, I kind of believe that, uh, you know, obviously Versantos has some problems psychologically. There's something going on with him. Who knows what it is? Trauma induced, whatever the issue is, but the, the dude's got some issues that need to be worked out when things like this start happening. And like, I've seen, plenty of occasions in professional fights, a very popular one. I can't remember the guy's name, but George Foreman was a heavyweight fight that George Foreman was, uh, was calling for ESPN. Um, this guy who was a very big heavyweight prospect quit halfway through the fight, um, sat on his bench, wasn't injured. Nothing was wrong, but just having, you could obviously have some kind of an emotional breakdown. And we're talking about, a top prospect in the heavyweight division trying to climb his way up to be heavyweight champion in the world that this decided he wanted to quit fighting because of some emotional breakdown. You know, so you can see like the same fire sometimes that drives people to be these competitive juggernauts also can flatten you out into the 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 the, the weak pile of whatever show <laughs> pile of right. flesh and bone. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> and tears. You know what I saw when I saw this uh, this finish was Iber Santos just quit because not because he you know he was beaten but because he was beating psychologically and just didn't want to concede to the tap so instead of tapping he just submitted because you know Felipe got the mount then afterwards it kind of looked like he was holding his rib or whatever the hell was going on but dude like come on bro you're getting paid man you're getting paid big money that I'm sure they paid him. A hefty sum to do this to do this match, probably high five figures to do this match. You know, maybe six figures. I don't know. I don't know what the kind of the bankroll was, but I'm imagining it was close to ten grand, twelve grand, whatever it was, just to show, and then whatever money they were given to win. I, you know, he- I, I, I've been talking to my, some uh, friends of mine and like some of my coaches about it, and they, the ones that have followed Santos, say like when he's on, he's great. You know, he's, he's a, he's, he won worlds. He's a spectacular athlete. He, he's like hardcore as hell. He's done crazy. St- like he's been allegedly doing crazy stuff in Brazil since like he was a teenager. And a lot of it's like mental issues. Yeah. Like that this guy's got some mental stuff he needs to work out. Right. And I, I'm not qualified to really speak on that. You know, I don't know the guy. I've never met people that have trained with him, but it, from his performances and the outbursts that he has, it's obvious that he's not doing all right. You know, he's not doing phenomenal right now. And you know, Kev, man, like, like I was saying before, when you talk about this in the big picture, you know, becoming a fighter <laughs> in any regard isn't something that normal people do. You know, it's not something that normal human beings and normal individuals, yeah, everyone thinks they want the spotlight and everyone wants the fame and fortune of being on top and being called the champ and, and all the cool things that come from it. Uh, but p- when they start to realize what it takes to actually get there, they usually fall off. And it takes a certain type of chemical imbalance or certain type of chemical disposition in your brain, psychological disposition to be a professional fighter. And unfortunately, some of the same things that make those professional fighters also make some of the less than, 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 uh, than nice characteristics of, you know, criminals and, and other people like that. Like it's a very fine line between chaos and, 
championship when you're going out there trying to put your life on the line every day, day in and day out to try to make it to the top. And Irma Santos, is, we see that all the time. Mayhem Miller, you know, we, we just talked about Mayhem Miller last episode. You know, so you see guys that just don't start to make the connections and then they start to falter off and go down that dark path. It's sad to see. I'm just upset more than anything, like from just a fan point of view. It's like, bro, Irma, come the fuck on, dude. Like, you just gave up off of a mount, like blue belts at tournaments. If one of my blue belts <laughs> did that in a tournament, I would look at him in disgust. I would just be like, bro, like, I understand you're frightened, you're concerned, but I would have to at least, ex- I would have to at least acknowledge the circumstance that, like, you have to realize, dude, you're not in danger yet. Now, I don't have Felipe Pena on top of me, but I can imagine if Felipe Pena mounted me, like, you know, I would, even if I felt impending doom coming, I would try my damnest to not allow him to at least make him finish an arm bar. Well, what the, the, the really crazy thing that was revealed afterwards is that Felipe Pena uh, won that match with a, with a very injured ankle. Right. Yeah, I didn't even, I didn't see that part either. Like he was like he had revealed that he had like he had uh, damaged it early on in the match and that he was like just focused on winning and I, knowing that this guy was fighting his heart out right. with a with an injury that other people like if he tapped and then posted this picture saying right I completely messed up my foot my bad you're like okay yeah that makes sense doesn't like, excuse it. You know what I'm talking about, like, but but you kind of like say, okay, I get it, you're hurt, or you just you have an op- you have something that came up. I don't know, maybe I don't know, but like I mean, like if that happened during the match, yeah, I, I would so. get if he like wanted to not risk further injury. That is a that is credible in my opinion. Right. I don't lose. Right. I'm not looking at Felipe going, oh, you loser, wimp. Like right. like look at that, how inflamed that ankle is. And I obviously I get that being a black belt, you just you muscle through stuff. I, I totally get that all the time, even though you probably shouldn't. But the fact that he had that and he went on and Herbert quit due to mount, like right. that almost is just like salt in the wound. It's this whole situation. <laughs> disrespectful to Felipe. It's disrespectful to jiu-jitsu. And like, I don't, again, I don't know what's going on with Iber Santos. Maybe he hurt his rib and maybe the mount with Felipe on top of him was, was bothering him. But like, come on, dude, like you're supposed to be this high level warrior that you claim to be. You chase people off the mat and started to fight in the, in, in the stands and then claim it's because you're a warrior. You can't hand. I, I, I don't take kind of this and try to walk upon that platform. And then you're going to tout this pout. You're going to tap to some dude because he mounted you. And you know, he didn't tap because of the mount. He tapped because he didn't want to submit. He didn't want to get submitted inside of his brain. He's thinking, Oh, I don't want to have to go. I don't want to have to work to get submitted. It's going to happen anyway. So I'll just go ahead and tap now. Like that's just fucking bullshit, man. Yeah. It's like, it's also stealing from uh, Pena because like Pena did all the work. He did everything right. And you're, you're, you're not allowing him his do like he right. earned a submission he earned it he earned you're absolutely right he earned that submission it's and like dude come on bro like these people promoters are paying you money to do this shit dude fucking fight it work hard try not to get submitted to your best man. and this might be just like from my point of view as a filthy casual but it's not like this is some random tournament that he entered and he like he's facing a purple belt and the purple belt's molly whopping him and he doesn't want to have the dishonor of tapping to some no-name lower belt you're fighting one of the best in the world it's not like people are gonna like make fun of you for losing to felipe pena a guy who's beaten gordon ryan twice like what are you doing i would be like hey i like you know i I did pretty good Molly Wappen. Did, did you learn that in Oxford? It sounds like a very English. Uh... <laughs> oh, I, I wish I could take that. I, I old, wish I could take it back. I never. The old I Molly Wap. <laughs> no, just like. No, but, but for real, I know that there's a lot of pride for black belts of that level, that they got to win and win and win. And that like if they, if they lose, it's to someone that's like the best of the best. Like, right. why do you. Mental, why are you unable to mentally lose against a guy that's just that good? Like, you know, I know I obviously that's that that's purely from a casual, and so I'm asking you as like a, a high level competitor, like, where is your mind in that? Like, when you're facing someone oh, of that caliber, well, I mean, 
I don't know, man. Like, if you're on the mat and you're in the middle of a competition, like, I don't care who the person is in front of me. Like, you're on the mat. This matters. You're being paid to be there in particular. You know, it, it's live on television. Or even if you're not being paid, like, you should have – it's different than when you're training in the gym. Like, if I'm training in the gym and I'm tired and someone like a black belt, like Felipe Pena, mounts me, or even any other black belt mounts me, and I'm like, oh, dude, fuck, you know – you don't have it in you. You know you've already reached that point of no return. So, okay, cool. I'll concede the tap and move on just because I don't want to risk further injury or blah, 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 blah. Nothing is on the line, so why do we have to worry about it? Like when you get to that level, you can start to realize, all right, dope. You caught me like five five moves ago. I screwed up. I'll concede the tap. Nice work. You know, now – when you're on a competition mat though, and you get caught in similar situations like that, like, you know, yeah, you know, you screwed up. Now, you know, you probably hit the point of no return, but you know what? Like I still have options here. I can still fight my ass off. I could still eat the submission for a few seconds or even allow for the submission to come up and try my best to explode through or use my energy or risk a marginal aspect of an injury just because, Hey man, I've got pride. You know, I got pride on the line. I'm not just going to let here and, and let someone, is distinguished as Felipe Pena submit me just because, you know, like I, I don't, I don't see how that could even factor into the equation in a situation like this. And I hope that Ivar Santos doesn't get any more, uh, any more big slots on big shows. He just, uh, he's, he doesn't deserve it. I think he's, he's done. I, I don't know any promoter that would want to take a chance on that happening. Like yeah, he's, he, he's completely done now. Either he gives up or, like he could win, or like if he loses, he it's either because he gave up or it's because he straight up tried to attack people. You know, like you're, this guy is so volatile in so many different ways, right? That like there, there's nothing to be gained from having him on the card except for people tuning in solely to see like what crazy stuff he's gonna do or like lame weird stuff he's gonna do and that's not what you want that's not the kind of eyes you want on your card you don't want attention being diverted away from the legitimate matches on your card because you've got a guy that's gonna it's guaranteed to be weird whatever he does you know well, like, especially now i mean pro- previous to that yeah he had all the all the unforeseen circumstances all the all the, the the intangibles about him you never know what he's gonna do he could go crazy he could jump up at stage but like quitting is like ooh, that's just like oh you lose you lose everything now now you're not a warrior anymore now you're just some dude to quit to Felipe Pena's <laughs> mouth you know like I know so like I, full disclosure I'd probably quit but I'm not I'm not I, being I, I, on you know what show. Kev Kev I'll, I'll I will tell you one more I doubt you would you would you would have <laughs> you would have probably gotten submitted I'm sure that Felipe Pena would have taken your back because that's what he's gonna do oh really oh you think <laughs> yeah. but I sincerely doubt that you would have just said screw it and tapped as soon as you got the mount. It's just God, it just it just makes me ugh, can't believe that happened. I would give up and then immediately go get an AK forty seven tattooed on my chest. So I could be like my boy, my boy Herbert. <laughs> just the most metal.